we hit it. We're gonna see what happens. Welcome little, everybody. Welcome uh, back. Thursday night jam. Happy to be back. Me too. Nice to be here. You were away. I have been away. Yeah, my mindset has has moved since I uh, sat in my parked car in the garage on such a call as this last <laughs> time, which is probably two three weeks ago. Which is usually our normal cadence. We we get the itch. We miss each other. It's very sweet. Cars are very special places to record because they sound great. They're like yeah. tiny little recording studios. Everything is acoustically mm -hmm. nice in there. And we're so used to being in them. We're so used to listening when we're inside our cars. Mm. I've always wanted to like buy an old station wagon and convert it to a mixing studio and have somebody mm. drive me around while I made records. Mm. Well, yeah, I like being driven around, especially in my own car. One one trick for music producers when you're working on finishing a mix, um, you you bounce the mix, you throw it onto a CD if you make CDs, or you put it onto your phone or whatever, and then you go and play it in your car to make sure it sounds good because you assume that most people are going to listen to the music in the car, hmm. and it's got to sound good in the car. It's got to sound good everywhere. Hmm. So the car is like the default. It's like the lowest common denominator of wow. the stereo systems. Interesting. <sighs> so did you find art on your trip? Oh, definitely. Oh, oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was down in Los Angeles. Um, traveling alone? It was down on... Well, was I traveling alone? Uh, I guess so. And then I, you know, LA is a place I can go. And like, once I decide that I'm going to go, it's like, okay, let me start finding, a, like reaching out about places to stay and then start reaching out about things to, to do. Mostly people to go meet up with. Um, because everyone's got sort of a, a complicated hustle. So I usually reach out to like a dozen people who I know down there and then just kind of cobble together a sense of like who I can overlap with and who's maybe too busy and who maybe I actually don't actually know well enough to actually go meet up with. Um, so yeah, it was a good combination of that, a good little stress test of my actual identity. And another thing I like about these trips is I don't really go down there with like plans per se. And it's not a vacation. It's kind of like, well, I'm just like temporarily relocating my life and like running it from there. You're so, still waking up in the morning and writing, even though you're not at home. Yeah, for the for the most part, I. It's not that I slacked. It's that I didn't like feel the need to do it that much. Um, like there were some moments where I did, but I also spent a lot of time. Yeah not on my screen or not with a blank page. But I think I had like just enough, like just the right amount to like not lose touch with it. But it was also nice to experience not doing it so much. I think the first, uh... the first, I lost you for a sec. Guest muted app in background. Sorry, Jeff. We will be back in one second. He's muted himself. That was yes. strange. My, my phone went to sleep. Um, I think the first conversation we ever had, one of the first questions I ever asked you was if you needed a special space or setup or mm. something. I don't remember what your answer was, but I find that like it's, I always want to be creative when I'm traveling. And I find it's harder than, uh, than I think. Because it's not about like having the right tools or having the right chair or anything like that. It's about like having a frame of mind, I guess. Yeah, it's it's like a conflation of of like forces and like what you're ready, like what you're ready for, what you're ready to receive. Um, 
but it's also fun to like live other people's lives. Like, I feel like that's what I do when I, when I travel, I kind of go like tag along with someone else as they do their thing, which is like sort of a nice break for me doing my thing. Um, yeah. You get to go step into someone else's world for a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You get to live in somebody else's world for a, a period of time. That's nice. That's a, Man, I when I travel as a musician, one of the reasons I loved touring was because I felt like I had an uh, an instant purpose. Like every single day, I was supposed to do this one thing or few things. I was supposed to drive to another city and play a show, and if for some reason I failed, then I got another chance the next day, and that was a relief you know, from mm. my life of being living in LA and having a million things to do every single day, just being able to like say, okay, I only have two things to do. I could drive to a city, play a show and that's all. Mm. So I have to worry about it. when you're traveling and you're, uh, and you're in the, um, I don't know, I guess that sort of capricious mindset. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that's what it was. I, you mentioned to me that you were frustrated by how much scheduling you had to do, I think, or something like that. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, because all of a sudden my my language to people has to move to the the practical. When are you free? When are you arriving? What are you doing? Where are you going to be? What time? <laughs> And it's actually sort of nice. Like I actually sort of liked uh, living in the real world and like living with with other people's plans. It's a very different experience, you know, because because I also, um, you know, had it's like I like I'd say half the nights I was gone, I I would wake up and someone else would be there. So I would like come out of my room and like wake up into the conversation and relationship I had with that person, as opposed to waking up into just my mind, which is sort of my usual. So yeah, like, like living with others, like living communally has very much not been my thing. Um, so yeah, it was an adjustment. It, it's yeah. Having to speak a more real language and I sort of lost touch with my, not my inner voice, but I don't know how much yeah. I create in solitude. You need to have the, uh, the part of your brain op operating that the, the, uh, the, what would you call it? The instantaneous relationship mm. uh, yeah. part of your brain where you're ready to talk to anyone, any, at somebody. At yeah. Any given moment. Well, yeah. I mean, one of my best days was when I, I, I woke up and, there was someone else in the apartment with me, but I did my morning pages and wrote a page and a half by hand um, while someone else was, was like right there. And I was like every so often carrying on a conversation with that person, but mostly just like unapologetically focused on the page. And then that day was great because then I then I can really play with my voice and my identity when I'm in that like, like lackadaisical kind of like loose cannon kind of way, a loose confetti cannon. It's like, that's when I'm at my best rather than <laughs> when I'm trying to like make a schedule and then keep up with it and just like get there. Right. Like it's you a lot better hammer when it's like nail. play. Right. Hammer and nail versus confetti cannon. Yeah. Yeah. Shotgun approach. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would love that. There's so much precision that goes into what I do that mm. oftentimes I, I, you know, actually I've been, I guess you would say struggling with this where like I get into these zones where I'm really playful and super creative, but I'm aimless. And like, in some ways that's the way I, I want to be forever, like all the time. Like I, I just want to let my attention go to whatever yeah. attracts me. That's what I, yeah. And I, I really want that. But then I do that for hours. And at the end of those hours, 
all I have is the memory that I did that. And for an artist that can, and a creator that makes stuff, all I've made is something that is something that I experienced and that was it. I feel like that's something that I do all the time. And playing shows, performing is a way of sharing that experience. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've recently been, been going through, um, a bunch of notes that I've made maybe like a year and a half ago up to like a year ago. And I'm learning, I can like throw most of it out and then I needed to make it in the moment. I mean, it's almost like how I've heard you should like throw away your kid's art. Cause it's like they made it just to make it. And it's not that good <laughs> doing it was important, but the thing that was made is not important. Oh man. I have a niece. She's seven and she's discovered that she can sell art. <laughs> and so she, she lives uh, on a street corner and basically took over the entire fence next to their house, posting or actually hanging her, her art that she does on canvas. She's hmm. seven. She, she hung them all along the street and she said, art, three dollars and there's a little basket where you can put the money hmm. the strange thing is is like when she she has fun being creative but when she discovered that she could make money doing it she was like oh yeah i can crank these out <laughs> <laughs> i like, can crank these out i was like she's like That's i can crank funny. these out i can make so many of these and she gets so excited Every once in a while, they wake up and like there's some money in the basket, and somebody has taken some art, or they see it like as they go on walks, they see it through people's windows and stuff like that. Oh wow! Um, yeah, which is cool, but it's like, um, uh, you know, uh, wh 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 where did you hear that you should throw out your kids' art? Where did you hear that? There's an article in in the Atlantic, probably uh -huh. three years ago. It it it's that's a weird thing to say because like. What like it it begs the question what the hell is art for is it to do it for a kid or is it for somebody else to enjoy what that was or yeah it's funny i mean i i think it really is to do it i mean i i feel like i've i've become so like disconnected from the the audience experience like i feel like there's no stillness in which to anchor and experience something it's like it's like there's no starting point it's like there will never be a starting point again i'm just helplessly in the middle of of everything and i don't know what i mean by that um <laughs> but yeah like i don't know i have no faith in publishing i have no faith in sharing i have no i have no faith that anyone is ready for a finished work or that anyone is ready to focus and i think that's okay and maybe that's just me talking about me and that I feel like I'm not in the best like place to be a audience member, but I think that's also not true. So, yeah. Uh, well, who knows? Who feels knows very frazzled out there right now. Feels. Well, yeah. Why uh, do you think that is? Well, I used to think it was very special to. What share does frazzled, your thoughts frazzled, online. What does frazzled mean? Um, it's a good unsettled, word. Unsettled, in motion. Um, your feet aren't really set. You're sort of in the middle of things. Uh -huh. Yeah, transitory. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know. It it just feels like, like the car is driving very fast. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. Oh, look what we've dealt with for the last year, though. Not just yeah. not just a pandemic where everyone yeah. thought they were going to be really creative and productive, and they actually weren't. And then we have a movement like Black Lives Matter, where to release yeah. to publish your own art during a time when we're supposed to be rallying for something feels very. Uh, selfish and so so uh yeah it's we gotta work with what we've got yeah and i think 
maybe frazzled is the right word. We've all we're all trying to get to that that place together, and we don't even know where it is. Well, I mean, I sort of think like we're already there. It's like we're already all there, paying attention and listening, and here and in the conversation. Right? Like, I don't feel separated from anybody. Like, I mean, it's amazing how how many people are available via DMs and messages where it's like, I'm really not disconnected from my audience at any time. So yeah, I don't know. I'm, there's like nothing to be afraid of. Like I'm, I'm sort of like detached from my sense of urgency, um, which in a sense is good. Like I like reread my old stuff and it's like, I'm so like not concerned with or bothered by whatever I was when I wrote that stuff. Um, so I don't really like know how to continue it. I'm just sort of like, huh. But yeah, it makes me want to like scrap a lot of stuff. And it's like, it's great that I did that volume of work, but I'm sort of seeing now that I don't really need it. I mean, especially stuff like before the pandemic, like it's sort of like, it's like sort of hard to read because it's just from a different language. It's a completely different voice. And, um, yeah, it's, I mean, there's just so much stuff to read. It's, it's very hard for me to, to publish and to ask for someone to read something because I know that there is so much out there to read. Like everybody's talking, everybody's sharing, everybody's available. Everyone, everyone wants to be talked to and paid attention to. And taken seriously. And they're trying to, you know, consultant and thought lead and read and write their way into not having to have a boring job. And so writing is fine, creating is fine, but really I'm seeing that I'm I'm the only audience and that I make it in my own mind. There is no external world. There is no public. It's really just I'm playing for my own self-regard. And that's fine. I think that's a healthy mindset to have. And then, of course, then when I do share and someone else does show up and see it, it's like, oh, yeah, I get it. Well, in that case, it's very important that you continue to at least put yourself out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, but again, I, I'm I'm learning no matter what I do, I can't stop the show. Like I like I cannot do anything that would really be huge. Cuz there's so many other huge things going on all the time. Every, like it's all simultaneous with, with everything else. So, it yeah. Yeah, the whole like getting attention game, it's a complete there's absolutely no winning. Absolutely no winning at all. And so it's like, okay, well, what, what does doing well look like? Seriously. <laughs> That's like, and, and who's my counting? question of the month. Yeah. I, I, I am constantly banging my head against the wall because of like, because of my version of doing well, succeeding is so different from what everyone else decided or didn't decide or were taught was theirs. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty successful in life because I'm happy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, you're only as happy as your next Monday. Yeah. I'm, and I'm, if you're happy about your next Monday, that's about as good as you can get. And if you can see, you know, four or five or 12 Mondays out and they all look good. That's great. Um, I know. I know. I look forward to fall. I always look forward to fall. Fall fall is my favorite season. Oh man. It's going to be August, yeah, September, nice. October. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. That Still not used to these stuff. season things. Still not used to these seasons. You know, being from LA. Um, well, yeah, you, this, you, you mentioned, I liked your comment about, hanging out in your hometown yes that would be cool 
Yeah, the uh, the um, the living in the Bay Area in a place that has very mild seasons but still has seasons has actually has affected what I do. Hmm. Um, pro- probably in a good way. I mean, I guess it makes me happier to see things change. I love that actually. And I, th- hmm. I think one of the issues I had with LA is that it just was so similar day in day out throughout the year yeah i like winter i i like when it's dark i like when it's cold i like when it's rainy i like i i don't know for some reason i like totally come alive in that and like totally am just like so awake and so like on the ball and yeah. like very active and very productive very driven and intentional and on fire summer can be kind of languid so it's nice. I I feel like it's it's been a pretty good summer, uh, even if it's hard to say if it if it's been productive or not. Because for me, like being aware of my not being productive is productive. Oh, is so it? I feel like I was. Yeah. How does that work? Oh, man. Well, I mean, when my when my work is paying, you know. Albert Camus has this quote. He says, an intellectual is someone whose mind watches itself. And so I feel like as long as my mind is watching itself and I am not sleepwalking through the days and I like never take anything for granted and I like never do anything because it's cliche, but it's like every time I'm doing something, it's like for the first time, as long as I'm like, as long as that's the conversation in my head, it's fine. Right. I've, I've learned that, um, there's both no rush to write down all my thoughts because they'll always be there. And I have no fear of losing touch with them. And I also know that the work is always going to be sit down with my mind and be quiet and let it flow out onto the page and see what's there. And that of course leads to messaging people, things and listening to things and saying things and doing things. Um, so yeah, it's felt good. It's like, I'm in, I'm in no, I'm in no, rush um so i've kind of like zoomed out and i'm like looking at the decades and it's like yeah like i'm allowed to eat chocolate and go to the pool and smoke a little bit of weed and laugh and listen to you know start four different podcast episodes and like not finish them and go to bed early like I'm allowed to do that. You, uh, your job is to like, like exist and be and notice things and feel things and write. Well, yeah, my, my, my job is, is to be interested in what's going on between my ears. And my job is to, to facilitate it and make it a show I want to pay attention to. Right. My, my, my job is to appease my mind. Um, and essentially by doing that, I pave the way for other readers to do the same. And I think it's just a waiting game, right? Like I feel like the, the traditional way of being a person just keeps falling away more and more every day. And like people are getting wise about, Oh wow. Like, how I'm doing in my job is like definitely not enough to sustain me in my life and like keeping my life, my self together. It's like not nearly interesting enough. So they realize they need stories. They need voices to listen to and conversations to participate in. And that mainstream media is so crap and it's like so important to, curate for yourself who who your world of voices is your own world of information and communication and yeah the i've kept doubling and tripling down on on that being important for a long time and uh i don't know other than like conversations like this like, how often are you collaborating with others? 
Well, I mean, I I think any relationship I have is a collaboration. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there there's back and forths I have with people either just text messages or sending articles or we'll have phone calls or we do voice memos back and forth. But how about stuff that gets published, that gets out there? Because this is something that we do together. We share ideas and we talk about shit yeah. and then we publish it. I guess, I mean, my answer to that, I guess, is like not much, but I, but I'm seeing, I don't really worship out there as much as I used to. Uh So it's not like, you know, again, like I know how other writers do their thing. They submit a lot of stuff to journals, right? They, they trim down things. They, they edit drafts of things and then submit them. And then they say, I'm so honored to have my poem in this publication and then you get a lit, you know, you get thirty people on Twitter who are like, "Yay, congrats!" <laughs> like, yep. I see, th- I see that out there, and I think I can imagine what it would, what what the day of keystrokes would be in order yeah. to produce that look of a life. And I certainly have nothing against it, and I'm I'm not actively against it, um, but I can sort of already see what it would be like and it wouldn't mean that much to me well that that um that process is very very old um i don't know maybe hundreds of years old like the the process of writing something and submitting it to somebody who's going to be a gatekeeper of your success or whatever yeah and i think like I, i i right now is like what is one of the first times in history where it's it's well it's not the first time but it's it's much easier to to avoid that right now because of the internet and uh i'm in a music music project where we are publishing our own music and however the way that we're doing it falls into it falls in line with the way a lot of other artists are doing it and that's like kind of hard for me to like be basically saying oh these other artists did it this way so therefore we should do it the same way um but it's a collaboration so it's not like something where i can say hey we're gonna turn this on its head and do something completely different that's why collaborations can be tough sometimes obviously i kind of live by them but Hmm. we're we 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 finished an album finished a record it's like maybe 40 minutes of music hmm. and it's, and it's designed to be listened to as a record. All the music kind of blends together. Hmm. Um, there's a narrative to it and everything. However, the, the MO these days is to release one song at a time because that's the way to get the biggest runway for your money basically it's the Hmm. for your time for your record it's the best way to stretch out the promotion of what you're doing because everyone needs to release content constantly everybody everybody needs to like constantly (laughs) be supplying their followers with with consumable content and uh and so if you just put out an entire record all at once that's just one one piece so you right. have to you have to separate it well, yeah, ten it, or twelve. Yeah, I mean it's more about the the conversation you are sustaining with them. So it's yeah. not about raw output, right? Because I mean, yeah. I mean again, like I can put all sorts of hundred page documents in public and say, here it is, it's published, boom. But that yeah. ends up not really mattering. It's like, well, what are people actually paying attention to? Yeah, and I mean, what was it like? Charles Dickens wrote everything in installments, right? It was all published individual chapters um so it's not not a new not a new concept but it's kind of infuriating if your art was originally meant to be something that was long form that's consumed that way and then you realize you're compromising because what? you're compromising because it is going to be the most efficient way to get people to listen to what you've done well you can read also, what you're you, you can also do both right i mean what you what you communicate does not need to change the product per se and or you can have a whole different set of assets for communication purposes right like you can have your long form thing but 
you should also do more conversational stuff. And it's like, well, why wouldn't you also do both? Right. I actually, I mean, I have a world of all sorts of finished work that you can click through and read. Um, no one really does. And I don't know if it's because it's not good or, or because there's so much other good stuff, or I haven't asked the question in the right way yet, or I haven't actually offered it up and it's actually not a generous invitation. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah i mean having that the the on i mean i'm available i think i think my job is to be available and to be responsive um i can keep working on a long kind of like detached thing at the same time as responding to individuals in the particular voice that i use with that person on this particular day, given their particular circumstances, like I can do both. Like I can be in my own mind, making my own thing. And then also sustain a daily, uh, an interface with the world, with real people, with, with stakeholders. Um, well, that's cool. We are at a place where we're, this is a brand new project. So we, uh, we're going to be looking for looking for people to want to engage. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the, the hard part is like getting, finding someone who's ready and like wants to, to go on a trip and wants to take in what you're putting down. It, yeah, that's just like hard to get. It used well, to be. It used to be. It used to feel easier to get. In some ways, yeah, it's probably um, easier to find like-minded people that might be interested in what you're doing. Well, in theory, it is, but in practice, it does seem to be pretty hard. Well, I mean, cause... I keep waking up and 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 being so strange. Like, <laughs> I I keep being someone who I don't know if he is relatable. Like. <laughs> And like, I let myself do that. Like I, I, I don't follow a script or a schedule really. Um, yeah, that's me too. You keep waking up and being so strange. Yeah. It's like, I, I wake up as a, sometimes as a stranger to yesterday's self. And it's like, well, I, I don't even know how to go plate myself. Right. I don't know. I, I, I feel like my body is just like rejecting content and that I'm not going to meet people through a public piece anymore. Like the public forum where people are out there performing and talking and thinking out loud. It's, it's not that it's poisoned. It, it's that it's just it's so loud and always there and so much of it that it's, I don't know, it, it's, maybe it's not my place anymore. I don't know. Well, if it's not, then what do you do? Where do you go? Well, I guess messages one-to-one rather than routing through a, a public thing. But, mm. you know, the public is still irresistible because I think someone might be there. Um and I, I do, it does still feel like it takes a fun risk to do, to, to post in public. Um, yeah. but yeah, there's just like so many interesting risk takers and truth tellers out there that, I mean, in a sense it's good cause I, cause I can get away with anything and like, I would really have to really take a big risk and really do something weird in order to uh, raise any eyebrows. Otherwise, I think... Why don't we have a system for, like... Why don't we have, like, a universal system for tipping each other? Yeah. You know? Like, I, maybe that... Is that a terrible idea? Maybe that's a terrible idea. Well, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, more, it's more cultural than anything, right? I mean... I guess that's what likes are on social media, but I feel like there's got to be a private well, way to do that too or something. Well, I mean, 
Venmo exists. I mean, Patreon exists, as you know. Yeah, um, but with my friends, I usually don't think like, hey, it was great hanging out. I really appreciate being your friend. Here's 10 bucks. Like, that doesn't really happen. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know? But, like, it kind of mm. should. Like, if you, like, but the problem with that is that that would that system would end up really ugly really quickly. I just it seems like maybe not. Would... I mean, it's like 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 you tip your restaurant server, you tip your cab driver. I mean, it actually make it's as, sort of like a like a similar service you would tip someone for. It just seems like in a sense it's interesting. It, if it if something like that worked, then like you would end up paying for things that made your life better, and hmm. those things would end up in your life more. And if they were people, then they would be appreciative of that. Like, I mean, yeah, man, people, especially Americans, are just so weird when it comes to money. We've well, made money and a new a, a, a new emotion to feel. Well, this is a good question. I mean, because because it's it asks, well, where does our money come from, right? What is the difference between going to work and showing up for friends? To me, of course, it's the same where you just show up and you're open and you're curious and you want to receive and you want to give. Um, it's the same, it's the same thing. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you know that I'm a, I'm a critic of the workplace and salaries and, uh, renting your behavior to a pile of money. Yeah, but I mean, like, that's, I, I I agree with you. I feel the same way. But like, I mean, that, like, that's also pretty privileged way of looking at things because of how much stuff needs to get done in a workplace. Maybe it could be done outside of a workplace, but the organizing factor will still need to be there. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think workplaces are mostly like babysitters. It's like there's so much to do in a workplace because people need to do things. It's not because things need to be done. It's because those those people need to keep their hands busy. Maybe a lot of employees are like that, yeah. Um, but like there's a lot of things in the world that still need to be done. In fact, most things that need to be done are things that people don't want to do. Someone's got to collect our garbage. Um, and that takes an organization... It's not like I'm going to tip one guy who just likes doing it, you know? Um, yeah, it takes an organized effort for sure. But I also think that there are people who take pride in it, right? I mean, we could go interview garbage men. I don't, I would doubt that. I hope so. Most, so. that all or most wouldn't say that they dislike their jobs. I bet, I bet they sort of like the rhythm of it. And it's like, if you understand your purpose, that's how you are happy is when you are serving. And you're making something happen and you're being of value, of service. Yes, especially when the community is one that you're part of. Right. If you have to go collect garbage in a rich part of town where you don't live, well, that yeah. kind of sucks. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess unless you're getting paid lots of money, but... Um, well, yeah. I mean, one, one thought I had on, on this trip that I like um, was the idea that... Politics is really about your own alienation from the food that you eat. You can really take it. You can really Explain take it back <laughs> to food. So we were out on. I was at a friend's house. His partner works on a farm, and he had brought back nectarines and peaches and tomatoes. Um, and we were eating some of them, chopped them on a plate, and it it felt so good to like literally be eating the fruits of his labor. Um, and it's like, wow, like it's so weird to remember like living in a big city and like going to work in a big office building and then getting paid direct deposit and then going to the grocery store and eating that. It's like, huh, that it's such like a spread out economy when you do it that way. Whereas staying local, it's really satisfying because yeah, Money. It is. Yeah. I yes, I, I I like to grow my own food also. One of my hobbies. Mm. And it's weird because that it's 
I, I'm actually glad you mentioned that because sometimes, because I have a garden in my backyard and I sometimes feel like I'm wasting time gardening. It's such a weird thing. It's like a 20, 21st century thing in my brain that makes me feel like that it's a hobby and therefore I shouldn't spend a lot of time doing it. But what I'm really learning to do is feed myself and grow my own food. So I shouldn't be ashamed of that at all. But um, yeah, you're right. Uh, so how is that politics, though? I understand how that's. Uh, well, I, I understand how that's maybe your work or your your um, you know, the the way that you get your direct deposit. But how do your politics get into that? Well, I mean, I, I wasn't saying my politics. I was saying I was saying politics in general is mm -hmm. the result of alienation from the food that you eat, right? All of a sudden, when you go and do work that doesn't really go toward your local community and then mm -hmm. you get paid for that work with money that you go then spend on food that doesn't come from your local from your local community you really get isolated and alienated from the experience of presence of being where you are and so explain like maybe define politics in this in this like what like what do you what do you mean by politics i don't understand because hmm. i agree with you that like yeah that definitely takes a toll on our society when we don't even know where our money is coming from and what what communities we're benefiting but they're not obviously not ours so there's an alienation there but uh but usually when i think of politics i either think of the sort of the relationships I need to have with people in order to make things mm. happen. So maybe that's it. Or I think of the more probably the, 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 the more popular, you know, meaning of politics, which is basically like, uh, maybe, maybe governance or government and how, how to organize or something like that. But what, what do you mean in this case? Well, I guess what I was noticing is that I don't directly work for the person who is responsible for my food. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, it's such like a roundabout, circuitous um, web to sort of track what I do for whom and then also how I get fed. It's like, it makes me want to make a smaller system. Hmm. Um, I, wish, now, um, I, wish, I wish we had smaller systems. Well, yeah. I mean, cities and counties and states and regions. Yeah. It could be different for sure. Oh, man. That's a pretty big long conversation there smaller communities how do we bring that back it seems like we're going the opposite direction hmm. i don't know i know very very few people that are actually working within their communities well yeah i mean it's all about you know do we like having online community with people we don't really see but we know we're there. Online community is a thing that helps people emotionally, I think. And I think it's probably yeah. a good thing. But it's like not the thing that saves you when you're having a heart attack. It's not the thing that um, helps you um, when you need help, really. I mean, I guess it could, but... Yeah, yeah, it's a different, it's a different kind of, of caretaking. Yeah, it's like you're not going to get the hand-to-hand -hand help bringing you soup when you're sick. It's like when in doubt, uh, if you're trying to measure the value of something like, uh, sorry, uh, when in doubt, when you're, when I'm trying to think of the value of something, I kind of just do that sort of like, well, what, what how important would this be to me in a nuclear apocalypse or something like that? Like, hmm. Like, because because I, I start to think that these things that are so important in my life, I start to think they're so important 
Like when it comes down to it, they would be absolutely worthless if I didn't have a special app on my phone or I would be worthless if I didn't have like, um, you know, three spare hours in my day to do whatever the hell I want or, you know, whatever, like, um, I'm, they're not even what you would call non-essentials. They're just things that sort of cloud up my, my happiness. Hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 feeling very free to cut things from my life. Um and knowing that they could come back later if they need to. Yeah, I'm just like feeling like very much like not that connected to like the recent past at all and I I maybe it's like ego death and it's like I really don't care about my reputation or identity. I'm sort of just like letting it wash itself out and letting life kind of take over me and like re repopulate what I am. I'm looking forward to, I guess when I say becoming more normal, I, I mean, becoming more like more original and, and I may, I may be realizing that to be original means to just be alive and, and just be immediate and like, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to be not simpler, but less, less connected to what I used to be. Right. I'm sort of killing the story. I'm killing the story of this dramatic figure named me. And I'm, I'm focusing on the eye because we're all the eye. Um, if that makes sense, that distinction between I and me, do you dig I th that? I think so. Tell me what you mean. Well, we're all we're all the I. Anyone who's alive is is I. Mm -hmm. Now, me, I'm I'm not out here quoting my credentials or my accomplishments or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's almost like I'm I'm coming to being alive, fresh. And I'm looking at it for the first time as opposed to there's a story I'm continuing. There's an agenda. I need to remind you about who I am and what I'm doing. Hmm. I think I get it. Like when I hear I versus me, I as a subject and me as a reflexive. So, uh, like, stuff happens to me uh things mm -hmm. go around me uh without me uh but mm. i do things i is followed by a verb mm. and me is followed by uh whatever you call it a circumstance yeah or it's mm. it's followed by a um uh, i don't know grammar terms anymore but uh it's 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 reflexive it has to do with me but it's uh that's not it's not the subject mm. Mm -hmm. we tend to all we tend to usually be about our, ourselves as a subject yeah i mean unless we we go in with the purpose of talking about some external thing but yeah i i feel like i'm i am someone for whom the self is the subject, not because it's so interesting, but because I think the the daily fight is to like get out of your own way and sort of get out of your own self talk and into the world. Um, but yeah, then you're faced with the difficulty of of identity and uh, what your agenda is and what your voice is and what your vision is. And I don't know. I I sometimes think I'm like in people's way. Like, uh, like I'm not sure how helpful I am. Cause I, I I feel like I sometimes like I'm not sure what I am. Well, that's maybe that's a good place to be. <laughs> I, I think know. it is. Yeah. I mean, my my struggles are not the cliche of oh I've sold my soul and and oh like I'm like stuck in my life. Like I'm never gonna be stuck again. So how Ever. do we how do we get out of our own ways? How do we do that? Because I I agree I feel that way too. 
I feel like the only reason I'm not as great, I'm not who I want to be and doing what I want to all the time, is because I'm in my own way. Well, yeah, I think you got to know know how to listen and uh, make room in your heart for others, and and really have empathy. It's like really like be able to sort of use your own self as a metaphor, right? I think the I think I I do what I do and I write so much and am so introspective. It's not because what I find is so interesting. It's that it allows me to understand what a self is, right? If I can understand what it is to be me, then I can use that to understand who you are. It makes me a better listener. Um I pay mm-hmm. more attention to every word that you say and I pretend like it's me saying it, right? Like when I listen to you speak, I mm-hmm. sort of like port my awareness into your body and it's like, okay, I'm now taking on your circumstances. Yeah. Uh, here's a question for you. How do you, how do you notice things? Like, how how um how do you get better at noticing things? Mm. Uh, an example is well, like when I was when I, I was following your trip through LA, and I was I was I was checking out the photos and videos that you were posting, and you were noticing things that I wouldn't have noticed. Maybe mm. it was because I'm from LA and I wouldn't have taken videos of those things. But you were pointing out things, at saying this is interesting or this is funny or this is fun or whatever, mm-hmm. and like sometimes I wish that I was more perceptive. I was more observing and I, because there's lots of things I think are interesting or funny. I mean, things happen all day long that are worthy of enjoying and sharing and that all that. But for some reason I'm so stuck in my own head or there's stuff in my own way that I don't think that it's worth even remembering Hmm. or worth even stopping and going, Hey, this is a really interesting picture here. Why don't I share mm. this with the rest of the world? I don't know how to get better at that. I don't know how to mm. like, it's like almost like I don't trust my own taste in thoughts. Yeah. I mean, that's so much of what I, what I work out it is cultivating that two way conversation in my own head two ways so like you have like a little fan of yourself in your head well yeah i mean it's like me debating with myself of is this thing interesting right i mean i'm essentially when i'm taking a picture or a video i'm um trying to appease my inner reader and i'm i'm performing for myself maybe i gotta do more drugs or something that's probably not it but i i sometimes i think like sometimes i think that i or maybe it's like i used to be i used to see the world in a creative and colorful way and i feel like so so much of so much of my time so much of my experience so much of my observation is kind of muted these days Hmm. um and that's kind of yeah I want to, I want to, if, if there's one thing I want to learn, I want to get better at, it's just noticing the good things, noticing the weird things, uh, in everything. Cause that's kind of like a higher power. That's like, yeah, that's like, uh, that's like God, you know, like if you can, if you can, it's like prayer meditation. If you're always able to see the good things or if you're always able to see the interesting things it's not just about how you can share it with people and get likes and follows it's about how you can actually turn your mind around because of what you're looking at or what you're listening to or you know just noticing that somebody said something unusual and that mm-hmm. making your day better or something mm-hmm well, yeah, I mean, one way to get to that very perceptive, perceptive state is just to, to inundate yourself with words and images and sounds, right? I mean, when I'm not thinking, 
Uh, well, I mean, I'm sort of always plugged in, right? And again, I've curated down my inputs very tightly, so I don't really get any junk in my inputs. Um, hmm. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, just by like reading and looking at stuff all the time and like immersing myself in other in in other people's lenses as well as my own. Yeah, I then look up from the screen and see a, a squirrel or a bird or uh, wind rustling the leaves. And I remember that the day is very long and uh, life is very long in the middle. And everybody's tired. And everybody's kind of stunned and wishing and waiting for a savior or a good president to make good policy and make the good thing happen but it just never happens and you're just sort of stuck waiting and it's not gonna arrive and that's all that life is probably going to be is sort of waiting for the good thing to happen and it you have to do it yourself if it's gonna happen well i feel like that's one of the reasons that we have that's one of the reasons that we value artists is because like an artist has lenses that not everybody shares, but they can, they can take pictures of things or they can make pictures of things. They could, they can show you. I mean, if imagine if there was somebody who could just be by your side all the time saying, Hey, look at how amazing this is. Um, like that's, that's the reason that I've surrounded myself with artists is because they are always showing me interesting things. Mm -hmm. And by interesting, I mean like literally they interest me. They, they, yeah. they suck me in. Yeah. Well, you're yeah, you're I mean, one of those, obviously. Yeah. I mean, they, what artists do is, is they give you a world, you know, they, they give you their world and I, they, they yeah. give you a world to live in. I have a friend, it's an old collaborator actually, played a lot of music together. He's an amazing drummer, kind of experimental avant-garde drummer. But for some reason, I think that even his, uh, you know, his the stuff he puts on Instagram, I think is impressive. Uh, like even if it's just still images, black and white or whatever, like for some reason, his the way he looks at the world is interesting to me because I don't look at it that way but it's refreshing. Um, it's almost like just a, and it's probably like this to you too, but even when I get a text message from him, it's like, it's that little bit of art. Hmm. Um, and I, when, when I was younger, I didn't value it as much as I do now. And I wish that I did. Hmm. Uh, in fact, a lot of what, in a lot of ways I resented it when I was younger because it was so, because it was so, uh, capricious i guess to use that word again it was so yeah. like it was so like i'm gonna do whatever i want and i deserve to be valued because i'm creating the culture mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. which is so with so many artists mm -hmm. which is the reason a lot of people don't like artists is because they think they are um mm -hmm. they're deserving or whatever yeah yeah i'm starting to see that i'm i'm pretty obnoxious and like, <laughs> like, like going and like socializing, socializing so much. I kind of like see what I put people through when I hang out with them. And it's like, damn, yeah. Like it's a pretty intense listening and replying experience to kind of live on my level. Yeah. And that, and that used to be a cool thing, but now it's just like, ugh, you're sort exhausting, of like, <laughs> like, like bewildering, but it's like, I'm also like, like stuck doing it. It's like, you know, something, you know, someone said is like, oh, like, you, like, like, you just so yourself. And it's like, that used to sound really cool. But now it's just like, kind of tiresome. <laughs> um, You're so you. <laughs> yeah, like that used to be like the coolest thing in the world. And I'm gonna like, break down and cry because it's so sweet. But now. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, tiresome. And, and like, well, what I do you like want to be? I just, like have, I just like have to keep figuring it out. It's like, yeah, it's like, ugh, like, all right. I guess you just kind of keep keep on figuring out what it is and where to put it and what to do with it. 
Um, you just don't have a chameleon suit you can jump into for like a few hours or something. Like, I do. Gotta... Well, I mean, I, I also know how to, to live my day without an answer. Um, though, you know, the old, the older you get the, like, like, like the sillier it is to have sort of an abstract answer to, you know, what do you do for money? It's like, it's fine to be young and not have an answer, but it's sort of impossible to be old and not have an answer. And so I'm sort of probably tumbling toward that too old to not have an answer. Well, I guess so. I mean, I know how to make money. I just don't. Yeah. I like if I really needed to, I could, but I, I don't believe that I need to. Yeah. And, right. and yeah. And it's like, I've, I've outgrown the fear and the worry and anxiety where it's like, I'm not motivated by the fear of not doing it anymore. Where it used to be my whole life was about get a job, get a job, get a job, get a job, wake up. It's all about this. Who are you doing? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Where are you getting in the room? Like I'm not motivated by that anymore. Oh, me neither. Oh man, I used to value a job so much. The job was one of the most valuable things you could have. It's to be appreciated. Yeah. Hmm. I, I mean, I haven't really had a job for a long time, but personally, I mean, I've had a job. I've had a job to do. I've got stuff that I do when I wake up in the morning and I do it. But it's I show <laughs> up for me. I show up for me. I don't show up for other people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, well, no, that's very privileged. I do know that, and I'm uh, very grateful to be able to do that. Yeah. And there's a lot of times that it doesn't work out for me and it's painful. Sure. But uh, so far, I mean, I've been living in the Bay Area for a couple of years now and I've been able to make it work. So let's see. Let's see if I can keep it up. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, one thing David Bowie said is like, never work for other people. It's like the whole reason you got into being original and not having a real job is because you had something inside you. You have a certain way of fracturing reality that is so powerful and overwhelming that you have to figure out what it is and then share it with the world. You have to. There's no way out but doing that. Um, yeah. So you have to do it for yourself. And I've sort of re like I've sort of like realized like no one has my answer. Right. There's nobody to go to for like strategy. Like, what would you do? It's like, they don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know. And they don't know. So yeah. Like, like, like in a sense of like, I've kind of finished the job of like, I've played out all the chess moves I can predict. Um, yeah. I'm in a weird place and I've like become so weird that I, I don't know if I can possibly ask anyone for help because I've, I've gone down a weird road and I, I don't know if I've, if I've disconnected myself or what, I don't know. Well, you do want to find a partner, right? What kind of partner? Someone to share life with. Um, the, the, the reasons that you know, like, I would say there's no reason that you would need somebody to share a life with. There's no reason that you need a partner. However, um, as you get older, it's nice to have somebody else taking care of you other than yourself. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm probably okay for like three or five years without like, I think if I, if, you know, if I just focus on my health and sleep and work, like I sort of weave romance and intimacy into that mm -hmm. um i don't think i'm ever gonna like bring a girl home to mom i think i'm like too old for that um because <laughs> i also know that like even if i did get married and had a partner it would not profoundly restructure my life it's like i already i already understand the job um <laughs> not yet. and i'm and i'm ready to and I mean, 
I do love the work of loving and being loved and continually being worthy of it. Um, but you know, I, I don't have much of a life to invite someone into. Right. And, and I haven't really, you know, and again, it's like, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a huge sense of urgency to like, I need to go blitz scale up and I need to go get this and this amount of time. It's like, I'm like, I'm too old for that too. And, and it's like, you know, like, like if I need to die, like if there's no way for me to just like, like live and like, like read and write my own thing that no one gives a shit about. Like if I can't do that, fine. Here's, here's my life card. Go throw me in the chipper and I can maybe be mulch for the plants outside the Salesforce tower in downtown San Francisco or something. It's so, it's so obnoxious how many people like, like, like just spit on that, you know? So many people who just think like you're a loser if like you don't want to live a shitty life racing to the top. Well, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I mean, I mean, it's like, well, I don't know. It's like, like you can't cling too hard to life. Like, like I've had a good life. Um, and yeah, I'm not just know, talking if, about, I'm not just talking about death though. I'm talking about like how this, you know, like we have this, we have this race to see who can become the most successful or whatever the fuck. And then, um, if, if when I tell people like, you know, I'm pretty happy. And if I had to do something I really didn't want to do, I'd, I'm actually okay just dying. You know, it sounds so much to some people like you're just like you're giving up and you don't think that life is worth it when it's more like, no, I just don't, I just don't want to play by those rules. Well, yeah. I mean, life now is something that's never really been before. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're, we're deciding as a society, as a culture, like who deserves to live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who deserves to live? Who deserves to and Yeah, I mean and like who who gets paid for for what? What work is valued? What work actually needs doing. So I don't know. I I I don't know if people have the energy to have that conversation. I think everyone is just totally burned out. But who knows? Maybe I'm looking in the wrong place, or maybe I'm just babbling and rambling, and I'll just need to wait until I'm more focused. Because right now I'm incoherent and abstract, and sound like I'm drunk or high or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, well, happy late July. Happy nice. late July, everyone. Thanks for listening to us babble and ramble and sound <laughs> drunk. Um, oh, so, all right. Um, let's, let's focus, and we'll see you next week okay. or whenever we do this again. Thanks, y'all.